Let's talk about the vice president debate. Now, there are two key moments that I want to talk about. Republicans are going to be focusing what I have on the other screen right now. And that is a very bad Tim Walsh flub. He said he was friends with school shooters. Now, I don't know how much of an impact this will have on normal voters, um, everyday voters, because of what happened immediately after. First, however, I do want to show you this Tim Walsh clip set in that office with those Sandy Hook parents. I've become friends with school shooters. I've seen it. So he did misspeak. Of course, he meant that he was friends or has befriended victims of school shootings, those who survived and the parents of the uh, children who have died in those shootings that Republicans seem hesitant to fix. And if they do offer solutions, it's nonsense like curved walls, blah, 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 right? Now, let's go ahead and focus on the most damning piece of the debate because J.D. Vance still can't admit that Donald Trump lost the election. I'll play the clip. It speaks for itself. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. Did Kamala Harris censor Americans from speaking their mind in the wake of the 2020 COVID situation? That is, a damning, to, that is a damning non-answer. Has she, it's a damning non-answer for you to not talk about censorship. Obviously, Donald Trump and I think that there were problems in 2020. We've talked about it. I'm happy to talk about it further. But you guys attack us for not believing in democracy. The most sacred right under the United States democracy is the First Amendment. You yourself have said there's no First Amendment right to misinformation. Kamala Harris wants to well, use the power of speech. government and big tech to silence people from speaking their minds. That is a threat to democracy that will long outlive this present political moment. I would like Democrats and Republicans to both reject censorship. Let's persuade one another. Let's argue about ideas and then let's come together afterwards. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Now, J.D. Vance is full of crap on both ends. First of all, everybody who is reasonable knows that Donald Trump lost the election. And I, I even believe that there was moments in articles out where Donald Trump knows he lost the 2020 election. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the aspect of censorship. Um, if we're talking about censorship, Republicans don't care about censorship at all. They've done book bans. You had Donald Trump himself uh, say that people who burned the American flag need to go to jail. You have Elon Musk, if we're talking about social media, who is a Trump humper. He recently banned Ken Klippenstein, got a lot of pushback on that because he released a J.D. Vance dossier. These are the same people who were going on about the Hunter Biden laptop from hell when Hunter Biden isn't even a candidate. He is not even involved in politics as a candidate ever. Um, you had Donald Trump also very recently come out and say that people who criticize the Supreme Court should face consequences. And and in the past, he has said that he wants to directly called for directly suspending the Constitution on his own uh, social media platform, uh, Truth Central. So absolute nonsense. And if we're talking about violence from the rhetoric, well, look no further than uh, January 6th. Uh, look no further than Republicans stoking uh, the great replacement theory, which I'm sure YouTube might have some kind of like link at the bottom now to the Wikipedia um, because I said that. But that has inspired mass, uh, mass shootings before, racist mass shootings before, whether it be the one in Buffalo. The most famous example was uh, the Christ church shooting that happened i believe that was in uh new uh zealand back in 2017 these uh things matter but republicans want you to suspend all your dis uh, all your disbelief and go with uh a, a view of the world that is not connected in reality this was the defining point of the vice presidential debate because i believe ro Khanna actually put it pretty good um, Vance was coming off as reasonable, even likable, until he, re he refused to admit Trump lost the 2020 election. That undermined his whole night because at the very beginning, uh, Tim Walls did look nervous. There was many moments where Tim Walls was kind of choking up. He had a flop answer 
when it came to um, China, when they asked, hey, why um, is there a discrepancy in the um, time you said that you were in China versus versus the uh, Tiananmen Square? He gave a non-answer. It was an absolute flop. And during this uh, debate also, you had abortion brought up where Donald Trump, um, the man himself, went on to uh, Twitter because he is on Twitter now. He's very desperate. He said, um, everyone knows I would not support a federal ban under any circumstances and would, in fact, veto it because it is up to the states to decide based on the will of the voters. Like Ronald Reagan before me, I fully support the three exceptions for rape, incest, and and the life of the mother. I do not support the Democrats' radical position on late-term abortion, like as an example, in the seventh, eighth, or ninth months, in case there is any question, the possibility of execution of the baby after birth. Thank you for your attention to this matter. Now, obviously, it's nonsense. Babies aren't being executed. They aren't being put on the block and, you know, not happening. Absolute nonsense. And then, and in terms of Donald Trump's view on abortion, he has flip-flopped numerous times in the state of Florida, which he votes in. There was Amendment 4 to repeal a six-week abortion ban. First, he said he would do it. Then he remembers that his base is uh, full of radical Christians, fundamentalists. And then he said, uh, whoa, not so fast. So he has to play both uh, sides of the ball here. And... Here is J.D. Vance even talking down to Donald Trump. Here's a clip because Tim Walls did bring this up, too. So let's go ahead and play that clip. Should you be chosen as the VP pick? And I know you've been asked about this before, about past comments that you've made about Donald Trump. Uh, you've said, I've never, I'm a never Trump guy, never liked him, terrible candidate, idiot if you voted for him, might be America's Hitler, might be a cynical a-hole. Yeah, so those are just examples. Now, keep in mind, Trump is also a guy whose entire cabinet has turned on him. So there is the uh, vice president debate. It really came down to J.D. Vance's ability to admit that his dear leader actually lost and he couldn't do it. And I think that is going to play a much bigger role in people's decision over Tim Walz's obvious misspoken flub. Let me know what you think in the comment section.